we're going to be talking about maths as a complex clock source. So a master clock or a signal clock is basically a regularly spaced set of triggers or gates that is used to clock something else. It could be used to run a sequencer. It could be used to progress any number of things. Uh, it could trigger an envelope. Uh, but the clock signal is useful in all sorts of things. And what's more useful than just having a clock that you can adjust with your hands uh, is a clock that's under voltage control. So we'll be looking at how MADS can create some pretty complex rhythms uh, that can be used as a clock source. So for example, uh, if I look at my woggle bug, I can adjust the clock speed or this red LED output uh, with two different knobs actually. Uh, but I can also send voltage into the woggle bug uh, in order to make it go faster or slower. And we're going to do the same thing with MADS. So at its most fundamental, MADS can be a clock uh, just by setting channels one or four to cycle and taking the end of rise or the end of cycle output. So as usual, we're gonna keep the patch as simple as possible because this is a demonstration. We're gonna be monitoring the final output of the DPO and we're going to be using the maths clock output to use the strike input of the DPO. So let's hear what that sounds like with just maths being a normal clock. So I take the end of cycle output, we go to the strike input, and there you have it. Whenever it's in cycle mode, you have that steady clock signal. When I'm running it as a clock, what I'll usually do is set the rise parameter all the way down, and then the timing control basically becomes the fall parameter. Now the first thing we'll do for this demonstration is put this under voltage control. So one way to get a changing clock signal over time, you can have your sequencer run faster and then slower, start and stop. But in this case, we're going to use channel one uh, as an LFO. So I'll set this to a relatively slower sort of triangle wave uh, signal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the voltage output from channel one here. I'm gonna put it slightly negative and I'm gonna send that to the fall input on the maths. What that's going to do is it's going to shorten the cycle uh, and change the timing between uh, strikes. So first I'll set this to cycle. So that's hitting our strike input. And I'll take the channel one output and send that to fall. We'll make it less aggressive there. But now our clock signal uh, still has a steady rate uh, overall, but what it's doing is it's speeding up and slowing down because we've put it under voltage control. So any voltage control is fair game. You could use a bipolar LFO. You could use uh, all sorts of things in order to make this uh, uh, change over time. So the clock signal doesn't have to be constant. The next way MADS can be a complex clock source uh, is an interesting exercise. It's going to take up the whole module, but what we're going to do is combine the triggers from end of cycle and end of rise from channels one and four, which will be operating at different rates. So for this, we're going to take the end of cycle output we're going to send that to channel three. We're going to take the end of rise output. We're going to send that into channel two. Both of those channels are going to be fully positive. And our channels one and four will be set to null because we don't care about the control voltages. All we care about is the timing between the two. So now if we set them both to cycle, what we're going to monitor is the OR output of those voltages. So you may have to adjust the uh, levels of channels two and three, but here's an interesting clock pattern. It has sort of this kind of galloping rhythm. Uh, but what it is, is it's the combination of both signals uh, going through the bus and then coming through the sum output. Now, if you had a very straightforward logic module that gives you the uh, maximum value or the OR function, uh, then you could do the same thing without tying up the other channels of maths. But once again, you don't need a specialized module. You can do it all just using maths. And if you say to yourself, well, I don't want to use an entire MADS for a complex clock source, well, that's why you need another MADS. The next thing we're gonna do is look at MADS as a burst generator. So I've got the setup the same way it was before. We're just going to be using the uh, channel four as our clock. But instead of having it constantly cycling, we're gonna use the often overlooked cycle voltage control input. So whenever cycle sees a positive gate, uh, as long as the gate is high, it's going to set the module to cycle. So what I'm gonna do is take uh, the LFO output from oscillator A of my DPO, which is in LFO mode. 
I'm going to take the sine wave output, I'm going to send that into the cycle. Now what's nice about using cycle mode is it's always going to finish its cycle, and because I've got a bipolar LFO going in, we've got alternating periods of having the cycle being active uh, and the cycle not being active. So now I've got two different avenues that I can use for voltage control. I can either increase the density of bursts, and I can have that under voltage control, or I could change the spacing between them by increasing the speed of the LFO. So you could get some very interesting rhythm effects that way. And if both of them are under voltage control, uh, you can have two patterns that are on top of each other uh, and moving in and out of one another. Finally, you could do the same trick as you did before by utilizing channels one and four, going through channels two and three, and using the cycle output. And now we've got yet another complex rhythm that uh, has a regular beat to it, it has a regular repetition, um, but it's not what I would call a regular clock signal. And you can get some pretty cool, pretty cool rhythms in here. Again, sometimes you'll have to adjust channels two and three in order to get them to play nicely with each other. But that's Maths as a complex clock source, so it can come a far cry away from um, just using it as a steady clock. You can use it for some very complex rhythms. Hopefully this is helpful and you can find ways to use these uh, in interesting patch applications.